For a time during the 1970s, Mary Millington seemed to be the most sought-after sex symbol in the entirety of the UK. The X-rated film star took the world by storm during her 20s before passing away tragically young by her own hand. Join Facts First as we explore how Mary Millington's cause of death was utterly tragic. Mary Millington defined sex in the 1970s When one thinks of British sex symbols from the 1970s, Mary Millington is undeniably one of the first names that comes to mind. But not everyone knows the star's tragic story. Mary was born in Middlesex, November 30, 1945. At the time of her birth, she went by the name Mary Ruth Quilter. It wasn't until after starting her career that she took on the stage surname Millington. Her mother raised her alone, and they lived near the area of Dorking. Relatively early on during her coming of age, Mary started showcasing some decidedly progressive proclivities. She married a man named Robert Maxted in 1964, and the two stayed together for Mary's entire life. Despite this, they had an open marriage, and it was said they were no longer on intimate terms towards the end. From the start of the marriage, the two began engaging in behaviors that most other married couples, both from the time period and since, wouldn't have dreamed of. The two were particularly fond of swinger parties, where they would invite other couples over and then swap partners. One might assume Mary learned this behavior from her new husband, but it seems it was actually the other way around. Mary was always the most sexually progressive person in the room, and it was no surprise to anyone when she became involved in porn. She first became involved in the adult entertainment industry at the behest of a photographer who spotted the young woman when she was walking down the street. This photographer recommended Mary to a friend of his, and she was soon showing up in magazines like Parade and Fiesta. Even in these earliest photo shoots, Mary had no fear of bearing it all. Her dalliances with these photographers led to her meeting a notable figure, John Lindsay, who was one of the most prominent pornographers of the time. It was through her connection to John that she first started appearing in X-rated film strips. Mary's early work in porn wasn't legal. The earliest of Mary Millington's adult films were cheap and could be made illegally. Many of them were filmed outside the UK so as to bypass the anti-pornography laws of the time. In 1970, Mary starred in her very first legal and official porn film. This went by the name of Miss Borlock, and it starred Mary in the role of ravenous man character. The film featured the character of Miss Borlock having intercourse with two different men, both of whom had a pretty hard time keeping up with her. Miss Borlock was a giant hit with European audiences, and around a dozen more legitimate porn films starring Mary Millington followed in its wake. The film was said to have sold upwards of 300,000 prints. It was also the recipient of the Golden Phallus Award, presented to it at the Wet Dream Festival in Amsterdam. This festival was a big deal in the adult entertainment industry around the time. Besides her willingness to be sexually active on camera, another thing that made Mary stand out during her career was her bisexuality. Though Mary was perfectly willing to take to bed with men, she claimed during her lifetime that she preferred bedding women. Audiences got the chance to see Mary put her money where her mouth was in the 1974 pornographic short Response, which featured the performer getting intimate with another woman. The attention Mary was getting from her porn films paved the way for more lucrative photo shoots and some work as a high-class prostitute. Mary wasn't above sleeping with the British elite for a hefty price tag. She also began appearing in traditional feature films in 1974. Her first role in a respectable feature came via a film called Eskimo Nell, directed by Stanley Long. Afterwards, she made cameos in other features. Meeting David Sullivan changed Mary's life. 1974 was a big year for Mary Millington, but the biggest thing that happened to the actress was meeting a man named David Sullivan. Sullivan was one of the biggest figures in the pornographic industry, and he quickly made Mary a bigger star than ever before. In fact, it was David who came up with Mary's stage surname, Millington. Before meeting him, she was still going by Mary Quilter. She was first introduced to David as a prostitute, having been hired to spend the night with the man for his 25th birthday. David quickly fell in love with Mary, and it seems the feelings were at least partially reciprocated. Mary was already a pretty notable star in the adult entertainment industry at the time, but David saw a good deal more potential in her. 
He went about giving Mary the designation of being the editor of his various pornographic magazines, though this was more a nominal position than an actual job. Her main role, as far as these magazines was concerned, was to appear naked in them, which she did often. David owned a lot of magazines, including Playbirds and White House. He also owned a sex shop in the area of Norbury that he ended up making Mary the manager of. With the help of David Sullivan, Mary became a bigger star in the pornographic industry than ever before. At the height of her fame, she was receiving thousands of letters from fans every month. Besides pornography, David also dabbled in more traditional feature films. In 1977, he released the movie Come Play With Me, which featured Mary as a sexy nurse. The movie became a major success, despite the fact that it received a decidedly limited release. It only played in one location, though David advertised it so well via his various publications that it ended up making a lot of money. Not only that, but it stayed playing at said theater for a record-breaking number of weeks. All in all, it played there for over 200 weeks. Mary appeared in a number of other X-rated yet more mainstream films, including 1978's The Playbirds and 1979's Queen of the Blues. When she wasn't showing off her body on the big screen, Mary dedicated a lot of her energy to charities. Mary was a paranoid wreck towards the end. Despite all the success Mary found in the adult entertainment industry, there was a caveat. Due to sexual stigmas of the time, society never fully embraced the performer. The authorities in particular were never particularly fond of Mary. They let this be known and it was trouble with the authorities that inevitably ended up doing the pornographic actress in. The trouble with the authorities first began when she was put in charge of David Sullivan's sex shop. The shop became a favorite spot for the authorities to raid, which made Mary paranoid. Towards the latter half of the 70s, her mother passed away. The event devastated Mary. Combined with the paranoid state she was in from being harassed by the authorities, this sank the performer into a serious depression. In the midst of her depression, Mary took to shoplifting as a means of escapism. Also, she started abusing drugs. Mary's kleptomania led to her being caught trying to steal an expensive piece of jewelry from a high-class shop in 1979. She was allowed to go home for the time being, but authorities warned her she was likely going to have to spend some time at the infamous Holloway Jail once she was convicted of her crime by the court. Understandably, the prospect of spending time in jail did not appeal to her. Mary was still living with her first and only husband before her untimely death. After being brought home from the police station, the performer was said to have made a series of manic phone calls. At the time, no one she called thought too much of her exasperated state. Few could have predicted she was about to go over the edge in a way where she'd never come back. Before her court appearance, Mary's husband found her dead in her bed. It was determined the cause of death was suicide, with Mary killing herself via a pharmaceutical cocktail. The legendary pornographic performer left a note on her bedside explaining her motivation. The note claimed the authorities had framed her and that she'd rather die than go to jail. She was only 33. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Mary Millington claimed that she was framed and that she killed herself because of it? Let us know in the comments section below.